I want to talk about how to decrease fat in a specific area of the body, a specific muscle, right? So like maybe it's in your tricep, maybe it's in your quadricep, maybe it's in your abs. And I'm not talking about the specific like fat that's hanging over the muscle, like spot reduction, which does seem like it might be possible based on some other literature, but that's not necessarily what I'm talking about. I'm talking about fat that's actually infiltrated into the muscle, like a marbling you would see with a steak. Believe it or not, we're seeing now in the last couple of years that this happens. And not only does it change the look of our muscle, less striation, you know, less density, just a sloppier looking muscle probably, but more importantly, it affects the metabolic function. That muscle is able, unable to oxidize as much fat. It is less metabolically active and it has less density and more just fat in it. So that means less mitochondria. So as we get older, it's gonna become more of an encumbrance to us rather than a help, right? The good news is there are specific ways to increase the oxidation of these fats. And I'm gonna jump right to it because can you lose fat in those specific areas? The answer is yes, you can. It's not the same as just doing a bunch of sit-ups to burn belly fat. We're talking about burning the intramuscular fat, which tells us that because that is doable, maybe there is spot reduction. Like maybe that can happen because I've seen some evidence now and my friend Jeremy Ethier had did a great video on this one study that if you do things right, I'll just deflect you to those videos rather than explain, it is possible to burn fat in a specific area. But let's talk about the myostatosis piece here. There was a study published in the journal Physiology, okay, and it had subjects do 40% of their work capacity for four hours with light resistance training. So 40% intensity for four hours. Okay, and what they found is that there was a 30% reduction in the intramuscular fat of the muscle that they worked. So if they did, quadriceps, they did leg extensions, they burned 30% of the actual fat that was infiltrated, that myostatosis, which again is metabolically active and just as bad, if not even possibly worse than visceral fat. Hugely problematic and metabolically unhealthy fat that we have seen linked with type two diabetes, that we've seen linked with high triglycerides, that is a potential cause and an effect of insulin resistance. So it's bad stuff. 30% reduction just by doing work capacity at about 40%. So what does that look like? That looks like maybe doing, uh, throwing a backpack on and hiking up a hill for an hour or two. You don't have to do four hours, this was a study. Okay, that's gonna be like rucking uphill, okay, where you have 40%, 50% work capacity, you're not super winded, you're in that beta oxidation state, but you're mimicking resistance training. You have to use the muscle in a way like it's resistance training to oxidize those fats but you have to do it low enough intensity so that you're not going ultra glycolytic and burning carbs, okay? Now we're gonna also talk from the nutrition standpoint too. Okay, flat out, there were studies that showed that just purely exercising is gonna burn the myostatosis, the intramuscular fat. But I highly recommend you drink green tea prior to exercise. And I know some people don't buy this, but there's evidence that shows up to a 17% increase in fatty acid oxidation with green tea prior to exercise. Okay, that's simply because you have A, the caffeine, but also some of the catechins and even the antioxidant effect that can help mobilize fat and increase oxidation. Yes, coffee does too, but green tea seems to be more potent. The evidence on green tea extract and green tea in general is really strong. I drink a green tea called Peak Tea, and I drink it because I can A, like love the taste of it, it's triple toxin screen, so it doesn't have all the garbage in it. It's like they're getting rid of the stuff and they're checking for it. I also really trust Dr. Jason Fung. I've been a big intermittent faster for a long time and Dr. Jason Fung had formulated and created Peak Tea, so this is his brand initially. And really high quality, cold filtered tea. So the green tea has all its integrity to it. It hasn't been denatured or oxidized, which is hugely important. So with this, it's very potent, powerful stuff. I also like it because I can drink it cool. I don't have to have it hot, which it's not a major selling point for them. That's not what they're after. But I do like that I can take a stick pack and I can just add it to some water and drink on it so I'm not drinking something hot during my workout. I've been drinking green tea during my workouts for the better part of 10 years, and it is by far my best pre and intro workout. Anyway, that link down below is for 20% off. I highly recommend their green matcha. I also like some of their other fasting teas. These are teas that you can drink in a fasted state because they won't kick you out of a fast, so you can kind of continue the fat burning process. Anyway, that link down below, top line of the description, saves you 20% off, highly recommend it. The next thing we have to talk about is the relationship between carbs and fats when you're looking at burning this intramuscular fat. 
There was a study published in the American Journal of Physiology, and this one was looking at, at cyclists. Fascinating stuff. So these cyclists, they had them do the first week at 32% of their diet coming from fat. Then weeks two and three, they had them either do a 2% fat, high carb diet, or a 22% fat, slightly lower carb diet. Results were crazy. The low fat, higher carb group ended up oxidizing 27% less fat and ended up mobilizing and oxidizing 40% less of the intramuscular fat. So going slightly lower carb actually allowed them to oxidize more of the intramuscular fat, that myostatosis. And this was going for you know, two hour rides, right? So they were going for a long period of time. So what are we seeing with this? We're seeing the common denominator here is moderate to low intensity, probably more moderate, for longer periods of time. So you actually get a chance to oxidize while sipping on maybe some green tea or something with some caffeine in it. Okay, while keeping the carbohydrates relatively low, which makes sense, right? Like if you are someone that has myostatosis, you might already have a degree of metabolic dysfunction, which means that you may not handle refined carbs or carbohydrates very well at all. So you might need to kind of exercise your way out of that problem first before you added carbs in. So it actually makes sense from an athlete level, but also from a metabolic dysfunction level too. I would not typically recommend that someone that is insulin resistant have a bunch of carbohydrates before a workout because you're gonna keep your blood glucose high and it's gonna be a lot harder to tap into the fat to begin with, which might be what you need to get rid of to reduce the inflammation in the first place. Remember that study I talked about, that medicine and science and sports and exercise study, and I've talked about in other videos. Myostatosis and intramuscular fat causes an inflammatory response. The leaner your muscle is, the less inflammation you're going to have as a result of that, specifically from the muscle. So the myostatosis is inflammatory just like visceral fat is. I did another video similar talking about this, how myostatosis is just as bad, if not possibly worse than visceral fat because it's almost a continuation of it. So if you have myostatosis, it's a problem. How do you test for myostatosis? Well, you can test this by simply getting an MRI, but sometimes I think like, people can even tell, right? Like there's a difference, right? Like you can like, you're gonna find that like even if your muscle size was the same, that you're gonna have more integrity and more density. Okay, let me answer another question that people are probably wondering about. Can you actually spot reduce in a specific area like additionally, like not just the fat that's infiltrated into a muscle? So the relatively new evidence coming out 2023, 2024, is showing that as long as you mobilize and then oxidize, so do cardio and some resistance training to that specific muscle, you might very well have a chance of burning fat in that area. The problem is it's really hard to do it with belly fat because you're not like moving that muscle a whole, whole lot. Because there's no denying that people like train their legs a lot and are like athletes that you think they usually have more strided lean legs. And you see the same with like upper body. But I had a hard time ever creating content around it until the newer literature started coming out. So the short answer is, although we don't know concretely, it's starting to look like it's possible that spot reduction could be done. You could lose fat in a specific area. But I wanna be very, very clear that it's more realistic that you're just gonna drop global body fat and it's not gonna be that noticeable. It's also important to note that based on some of the literature, the more conditioned and already lean an athlete is, the more likely it is for you to notice spot reduction in a specific area. So like if you're already 10% body fat or 8% body fat and you start trying to lean out in a specific area, there's a chance you might notice it better. A, because you're leaner and you're gonna notice it, but a conditioned athlete is already going to have a hormonal advantage to utilize fats in a localized area a little bit more. I'm gonna defer you to some of the other videos, I'll link out to them in the description, that talk about spot reduction specifically, as well as a shout out to Jeremy Ethier, who's a, a great YouTuber that did a great synopsis on it uh, about a year ago. So as always, keep it locked in here on my channel. I'll see you tomorrow.